Hello and welcome back to another trip report. Today we'll be reviewing Delta Airlines Delta One Suites on the Boeing 767-400 from New York City to Buenos Aires, Isaiza. Delta's home here in New York's JFK is located in Terminal 4, and the first entrance into the terminal building is for Sky Priority passengers, including us in Delta One. When flying out of Terminal 4 here at JFK, curbside check-in is an option, however we're really going in for that full Delta 1 experience today, so we're going to use the dedicated Sky Priority check-in area. Besides Delta 1 passengers, if you are flying with Virgin Atlantic in their upper class, you can use the Sky Priority check-in area, as both Delta and Virgin Atlantic have a transatlantic joint venture with one another. New York's Terminal 4 is home to a variety of Sky Team carriers, including KLM and Aeromexico and Virgin Atlantic. Now, you might be asking yourself, where's Air France? As Air France, KLM, and Delta have a close knit partnership. Well, they're actually in Terminal 1, so if you do have a connection, good luck with that. Compared to the other check-in areas, the one for Delta 1 here at JFK is quite secluded as you can see, and it's not really in the vast part of the check-in hall like the check-in areas for Emirates and Etihad. Check-in itself was pretty fast, and soon I found myself through check-in at security. The Delta staff who worked here at JFK were quite friendly. From check-in, there is no dedicated security lane that takes you straight to the lounge, instead the same security area is used for all passengers. Sky Team Premium Cabin passengers flying out of JFK Terminal 4 are entitled to use the Sky Priority check-in lane, including those in Delta 1. Security was pretty quick, and I found myself through the lines in less than 3 minutes. Terminal 4 has two Delta Sky Clubs here in JFK, one in the A concourse and the other in the B concourse. Both of these Delta Sky Club lounges are really nice, and they're definitely better than the, your typical United Club or Admirals Club. But first, I do have to say that the layout of Terminal 4 is quite large. This is definitely one of the larger terminals you'll find here in JFK. As you can see, the Delta Sky Club located here in the A concourse has a really striking entrance to it, and you can really tell that they put a lot of effort into the Delta Sky Club. A lot of Delta Sky Clubs have a really nice and modern feel, which I do appreciate. Upon entering the Delta Sky Club lounge here in the A concourse, you will notice the nice and modern feel that they opted for, and you need to take the stairs or the escalator. I do have to say that I'm really a huge fan of this light fixture that Delta Airlines opted for in its A-Gate Sky Club. I mean, this is really nice, and this is definitely one of the nicest lounge entrances I've so far seen, and you're greeted with this incredible seating, as well as amazing views of the action going on here in New York. A lot of the seats you'll notice within this brand new Sky Club do feature charging ports, and they're really plush, very comfortable, in a nice and relative modern style. Throughout the lounge, you will notice plenty of comfortable seating, and it's definitely worth doing everything you can to access these Delta Sky Clubs. The B Concourse Sky Club is definitely more packed, however, the A Concourse Sky Club offers incredible views. As far as seating goes, the Delta Sky Club actually does pretty well. You will notice some comfortable couches and chairs, and I grabbed a seat to enjoy these amazing views and do some plane spotting. As far as food and beverages go, Delta Airlines really shines with that in their Sky Clubs, and as you can see, the full-size bar here has a mood that sets it apart from the rest of the lounge with these amazing modern light fixtures. The face spread here in the lounge is actually quite impressive. You will notice a selection of soup, uh, cheese, charcuterie options, as well as some sandwiches with some sort of aioli in them, salad as well. You'll even notice some hummus, fried rice, noodles, so really impressive selection altogether. From the buffet, I did grab some fried rice with some chili oil, as well as a couple of charcuterie options. The JFK Sky Club here in Terminal 4, Concourse A, it's actually pretty nice. We do have a magazine rack, some nice restaurant high top seating, some more high top seating, and by the large buffet area, we will find another small buffet area as well as an area with beverages. You'll find the customer service in the lounge over here as well as some more comfortable seating. I wasn't really impressed by the service within the lounge, or the lounge staff I should say, as they kind of did threaten me to stop filming, and they weren't really that nice about it. I felt that they could have dealt with it a bit better, and to be honest, the Delta lounge staff here in JFK, um, they were, they were pretty strict about it. Normally, I've known Delta Airlines to have some of the best staff, as 
Delta, I definitely do prefer their crew compared to the crew I've had with both United and American, and this was definitely a really surprising experience from the Delta Sky Club manager and lounge staff here in JFK. Past the food and buffet area farther down to the right, you will notice these really nice phone booths, which are really good for getting some work done, really generous size as well, and definitely is a nice modern feel, especially with the glass door, as you can see. This is definitely a really cool area, has to be one of the nicest parts of the lounge. The B-Gate Sky Club also offers a sky deck, however, I do prefer the one in the A-Gate concourse, as it is um, well heated, as you can see, so it's definitely the perfect place to relax, especially in the winter time, where you come and do plane spotting, while with many other lounges and their outdoor terraces, it's usually closed during cold weather like this, so it was nice to enjoy the incredible views of the action going on here in New York. The bathrooms here in the Sky Club were well stocked with growing alchemist amenities and they were nice and clean. This does have to be one of the cleanest bathrooms I've come across in an airport lounge. I wasn't allowed to film in the B Concourse Sky Club as this is one of Delta's more packed clubs, otherwise I would have gotten in serious trouble as I was threatened to not be able to film, so instead I'll give you guys a quick overview of the lounge. The B Gates Sky Club here in JFK is definitely less modern than the Delta Sky Club and the A Gates, though this Sky Club is really nice, definitely has amazing food options, plenty of comfortable seating throughout the lounge. This lounge is also quite packed, and Delta built the second Sky Club in the A Concourse because the B Gates Sky Club here in JFK was quite packed, so Delta needed to uh, really cope with that issue, which is how the A Gates Concourse uh, Sky Club really helped. Now, this Sky Club does offer shower suites, unlike the other Sky Club, and you will find similar amenities, such as really good food options, tons of comfortable seating, and also, there's similar types of seating with like charging ports and other amenities throughout the lounge. The entrance to this lounge is actually pretty nice, and like the other Sky Club, you will have to take the escalator in order to get up to the main level of the lounge where all the food, seating, and amenities is located. Past the entrance area of the Delta Sky Club, you will notice a large seating area which offers plenty of comfortable seating with charging ports. You will notice a lot of plush seating throughout the lounge, such as couches, chairs, some of which even has tables and charging ports. As you can see, you will notice comfortable seating throughout the lounge, except it's in a less modern style, but it is still quite nice and cozy. You will notice similar food options in the Sky Club, with salad, soup, noodles, sandwiches, other pretty good food options, and the food here is definitely more chef-inspired compared to the American Admirals Club. The Delta Sky Club here in the B Concourse offers both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages such as champagne, wine, juice, and soda, and of course you will notice a couple of TV screens at this bar. It is similar to the bar you'll find at the A Concourse Sky Club, except for the fact that this bar is obviously less modern, and it is by the food station, so it's conveniently located. It's in a nice large area where you will notice some restaurant-style seating as well, and it was pretty packed at this hour of the evening. Considering that I had spent a good amount of time at both Sky Clubs, I was the last passenger in Group 1 to board. A lot of Delta Airlines flights from JFK depart from the B Concourse, as do many of Delta's partner airline flights operated by SkyTeam Airlines. Today's flight to Buenos Aires will be operated by an almost 20-year-old Boeing 767-400, registered November 832 Mike Hotel. On the Boeing 767-400, the sole Delta One Suites cabin is arranged in a spacious one-to-one -one configuration with cubicle-style seats.
The suite in the Delta One cabin are arranged in a staggered configuration, and some seats offer either more or less privacy. When seated on the right side of the aircraft, the even-numbered window seats offer more privacy as they have the consoles closer to the aisle rather than being closer to the window, and my suite for today's flight is suite number 2D. Upon boarding, you'll notice that each business class suite is stocked with the Weston Heavenly Bedding, consisting of a plush pillow and blanket. This was comfortable to use during the flight, and it was really easy to store because the bag it was in. The Delta One slippers were also comfortable to wear throughout the flight, and the Someone Somewhere amenity kit was well stocked. We also have a water bottle and the Delta Studio noise cancelling headphones. While the interior of this amenity kit is nice, the exterior is just as awesome with this really nice pattern. The Someone Somewhere Mendy kit is well stocked. As you can see, we have a singular pair of earplugs, Delta branded of course, a nice Delta branded pen, as you can see, an eye mask, which does have a really nice pattern to it. This was really comfortable to wear, and I did appreciate the pattern. We do have the Grow and Alchemist skincare items such as lip balm and hand cream, as well as this dental kit provided. I love the Grow and Alchemist amenities that DL opted for. Starting off with the large touchscreen IFE, let's go for a sweet tour of our Delta One Business Class seat. This can also be controlled by using the IFE remote located at the side of the seat. Beneath that, we have a pretty generous amount of legroom, as you can see, as well as the legrest. To the left side of the seat, we will find a nice large surface, as you can see, where you could keep items. You'll find a small mirror, as well as the IFE remote in this small little compartment, as you can see. So this is definitely a nice little area. Beneath that, we'll find the tray table, which pops out with one push of this button, kind of a thing. Fold it out to deploy the table, and then fold it over, and then put it back into its area to stow the table for taxi, takeoff, and landing. Beneath that, we have some seat controls, and we have more seat controls to the side of the seat, and you can also control your Delta One Suite's lighting. There are many different seat modes, which we will test out later on in the video. We also have some charging ports, as well as a headphone jack. And over here we have some storage. We also have a sweet light. This lamp adds so much coziness to the seat as you can see, so all in all it's a really great seat layout with plenty of storage options. While the seat itself is quite comfortable, it looks a lot more comfortable than what it actually is. Even though this aircraft is 27 years old, it was nice to see that each business class seat comes with personal air vents. I decided to change into the slippers provided and get comfortable. In terms of in-flight literature, you're just provided with the safety card as well as an air sickness bag. As you can see, the safety card is pretty basic, your typical safety card for any airline, as you can see. Feel free to pause the video for a closer look. Prior to pushback, pre-departure beverages were offered, and I opted for a cup of orange juice, which was served in this fun little glass. Prior to pushback, the Delta One menu cards were handed out by our purser, Paul. Feel free to pause the video for a closer look. The menu is written in both English and Spanish for today's flight. As you can see, there is a selection of appetizers and starters available. Now, everything is served on one tray. The entree is obviously the main part of everything that's on that tray. In addition, you will find a bread roll, some soup, as well as a small appetizer. The menu is written in Spanish as well, as you can see, and feel free to pause the video for a closer look. We also have a selection of dessert available, and the pre-arrival meal on this flight, which would be served prior to playing in Buenos Aires, is breakfast. As you can see, we do have the desserts and other breakfast items written in Spanish, and we do have some wines available on today's flight, and here's the wine list provided on Delta. There is actually a pretty decent selection on Delta, I mean, there's obviously more wine offered on Delta compared to what you'd get on American, according to this menu, that is. And then we do have the other beverages, including the non-alcoholic. Bienvenidos a bordo del vuelo de Delta con destino a la ciudad de Buenos Aires. La duración de vuelo esta noche será de 10 horas con 15 minutos. Antes de partir, queremos brindarles una presentación con las características de seguridad de nuestro Boeing 767. A favor de prestar atención a las páginas. No matter your journey, Delta is here to connect you to the airport.
Welcome aboard, and thank you for choosing Delta. The health and safety of our customers and crew is our number one priority, and the shared responsibility of everyone on board. So before we depart, please pay attention to this important message. Stow all carry-in items securely in an overhead bin, and place smaller items completely under the seat in front of you. Keep the aisles, exits, and bulkhead areas clear. If you lose an electronic device in your seat, do not adjust your seat and ask a crew member for help. As we leave the gate, fasten your seatbelt by inserting the metal tip into the buckle and adjusting the strap so it's low and tight across your lap. To release, lift the top of the buckle. Before departure, flight tends to dim the cabin. The in-flight entertainment system on Delta is truly incredible, and it works by using the touch screen, or you can use the IFE remote located at the side of the seat to control the IFE screen. There's an incredible selection of movies, TV shows, and audio options available. In addition, you can browse entertainment options or view the flight map for today's flight. There's also a flight attendant call button that is built into the TV screen, as you can see, and you can also control the brightness of your business class suite. You can also control the brightness of the screen, and in addition, we do have another feature uh, for settings and the volume. So this is definitely a really impressive IFE selection. I really like viewing the flight map. Flight time today is about 10 hours and 2 minutes, as you can see. You can also view details about other Delta Airlines aircraft in the fleet, including ours today, which is a Boeing 767. 400. It's pretty easy to zoom in and zoom out to view the flight map. You can view it from other angles as well, which is definitely a very cool feature. In addition to viewing the flight map, we also do have an option to view movies and TV shows available on today's flight. You can also view new releases and movies under two hours. There's even a slot for kids entertainment as well. We also have a slot for other types of movies like action and comedy. So definitely a really impressive selection listed from A to Z. You can view all the movies and TV shows available on your Delta Airlines flight. So definitely a really impressive selection. Definitely an endless selection. As well, you can also view TV shows from other companies such as HBO. Delta does partner with Spotify for its audio options available in terms of entertainment, and there's truly an incredible selection. I personally love Spotify, and just look at the amazing selection Delta Airlines has to offer. You're definitely not going to be bored on a long flight with Delta, considering that they have an incredible IFE system, as you can see, and this is definitely really impressive. I have to say that Delta's IFE system is one of the best IFE systems I've seen out there, and it's definitely nice and responsive, even on this old aircraft. I personally love the feel of the cabin that Delta opted for in Delta One. It's nice, cozy, and comfortable, as you can see, with just one business class cabin, so it's definitely nice to appreciate the privacy.
let's check out the Delta One Laboratory on the Boeing 767-400, which is actually pretty spacious. Obviously, because of the 767's narrow fuselage, this isn't the most spacious laboratory, but at least the mirror is quite large, and the sink is truly a great size. In addition, we do have the Growing Alchemist skincare amenities, consisting of soap as well as some hand cream, as you can see which is really impressive. I personally love the Growing Alchemist. I also love um, the size of the laboratory and the blue mood lighting that Delta opted for in its laboratory, as you can see. Moving on, we have a toilet, which is a pretty good size. You can use a foot pedal to open up the trash bin. And in addition, we do have the baby changing table, which is pretty plush and comfortable for a baby changing table in a laboratory. We also have another table, and I personally love the countertop space, especially with the blue mood lighting. I think it definitely suits the laboratory well. Now that we've returned from the laboratory, let's have a look at the different seat modes in this Delta One suite. Obviously, it is a must to take advantage of these different seat modes when flying in Delta One Business Class, starting off with the most basic position, which is the upright position. Now let's have a look at the relax mode, as you can see, which is not really that appealing to the human eye. It looks kind of similar to the upright position, except it kind of just dumps you back pretty good for watching movies. Then we have the lounging position, where you can also watch movies and maybe relax, read a book. This is probably closer to the lie flat bed mode. It's definitely more noticeable to the human eye compared to the relax seating position. And then, of course, we do have the lie flat bed mode, which we will test out later in flight. I put in a movie using the IFE system and decide to get settled in. About an hour and a half after takeoff, hot towels were handed out and the service commenced. My table was then set up for the meal service once the hot towels were collected. To kick off the food and beverage service, flight attendants offered each Delta One passenger some warm nuts and their beverage choice. I opted for a glass of still water. It was a nice touch that flight attendants dimmed the mood lighting for the meal service. It's quite unfortunate that the entire meal is served on a single tray, however it is chef inspired that you just do have to love it. For my entree, I opted for the spinach ravioli, which was served alongside some poached shrimp, cauliflower soup, as well as a salad with mixed greens, and a sourdough bread roll. I can't speak for the shrimp appetizer, but everything else tasted pretty good, especially the spinach ravioli, which was some of the best pasta I've ever had on a plane. The cauliflower soup was truly incredible and fresh, it was filled with flavor, definitely one of the best soups I've so far had on a plane as well. And of course, we do have to appreciate the fact that the Delta logo is carved into the cutlery as well, consisting of the spoon and the fork, however it wasn't carved into the knife. However, one of the most unique features about this meal was the salt and pepper shaker. On one side, it has the Delta logo, and on the other side, you'll find this fan blade. You can twist it for either salt or pepper, and it was definitely a really cool feature. And for dessert, the choice was obvious. I opted for the fruit and cheese plate, which consisted of some cheese, as well as some grapes, and some crackers, as you can see, as well as the delicious ice cream sundae, which is the signature dessert in Delta One. This was really good, and I highly recommend it. One of the coolest features of this ice cream sundae was the spoon. Unlike the spoon that I had the soup with, the Delta logo was carved onto the little end of the spoon, which was a nice touch. After the cheese course and the sweet dessert, I opted for a cup of green tea to cleanse my palate, which was nice and refreshing. I decided to stretch my legs with a walk through the cabin before grabbing some sleep. Economy class is arranged in a 2-3-2 configuration, as Premium Select, which is Delta's Premium Economy, is arranged in a 2-2-2 configuration. It looks really spacious and I would like to try this out sometime. It was a really nice touch that flight tents dimmed the cabin's mood lighting for when it was time to sleep and get relaxed.
The Western Heavenly bedding that's supplied is really plush and comfortable, consisting of a thick pillow and a singular blanket, which is really comfortable. Even without a mattress pad, this bed is comfortable, except for the fact that there is restricted space for your legs. In all of its glory, here is the Delta One Suites business class bed on the Boeing 767-400 in its complete lie flat position. On today's flight, the crew set up two mid-flight snack bars, one located in between Delta One and Premium Select, and the other located before the Delta One Suites cabin on this aircraft. It's stocked with candy, chips, bottles of water, and at the other mid-flight snack bar, you'll even find some fruit and cheese. You can just go there and grab it mid-flight and then return back to your seat, so it's definitely a really nice setup to have, though the mid-flight snack bar on American is a lot nicer for sure. I only ended up grabbing a second bottle of water before returning to my seat, even though there's an amazing selection. I slept for the rest of the flight until we had about three hours before arrival in Buenos Aires when I stretched my legs with the walk through the cabin and got some filming done. As we approached Buenos Aires, the pre-arrival meal which suggests for breakfast on this flight was served. Service commenced off of a trolley, and for my beverage choice I opted for a decaffeinated coffee provided from Starbucks. Delta Airlines does partner with Starbucks for the coffee they serve in both their lounges and on board. To go along with my beverage, I opted for some cream and sugar. For my breakfast choice, I was offered a quiche or the French toast bread pudding, and I opted for the latter, which was very tasty. In addition, we do have a croissant, along with some jam, butter, and a bowl of fruit. All in all, this was really good and sweet, and it definitely surpassed my expectations for breakfast. Prior to arrival in Buenos Aires, chocolates were handed out, which was a nice touch. Let's talk about the concluding thoughts of this experience with Delta One in their Delta One Suites on the Boeing 767-400. The ground experience in JFK was pretty nice for the most part. Staff at check-in were friendly. It's definitely a really nice touch that Delta One passengers get sky priority check-in and boarding in Group 1. Definitely well appreciated. I wish that security um, wasn't the same for all passengers. I wish that there was more so of a dedicated security area for Delta 1. However, there is a dedicated sky priority um, security lane in JFK, which is definitely well appreciated. The check-in area is nicely secluded. But let's talk about the Sky Club. Now, the Delta Sky Clubs are definitely the best of the big three U.S. airport lounge networks, the other two being the Admirals Club and the United Club. I personally love the Sky Clubs with plenty of comfortable seating and food. Uh, the Ace Concourse Sky Club in JFK was nice and modern. The one in the B Gates was definitely more packed, but still did an incredible job in terms of amenities and food offered. The staff could have been a bit nicer. I mean, they kind of threatened me to stop filming. I felt that they could have been a bit nicer about it. But other than that, the Sky Clubs are truly a great lounge. I personally love the Sky Deck and the A Concourse. It's definitely a great space. And it's really nice to see that Delta Airlines, which is my personally favorite U.S. airline, has invested in an incredible network of Delta Sky Clubs. Truly a great lounge network, as you can see, with really good food options. So I have to say that the ground experience in JFK earns maybe about four out of possible five stars. I felt that the Sky Club staff could have been a bit more friendly with me filming uh, their lounge. But other than that, this was truly a great ground experience in JFK. The staff at check-in were friendly. I just felt that the lounge staff uh, could have been a bit more friendly, but otherwise, truly a great network of lounges. The seat is truly incredible. I have to say that the seat is pretty nice, really comfortable as well. I love the storage options um, that the seat has to offer. Uh, plenty of good storage options as well, really comfortable, incredible amount of legroom of course, and the privacy with the cubicle style uh, suites that Delta opted for on its 767-400 is truly impressive, nice that Delta pulled off an interior that feels like it's less than 5 years old, 
even on a 20-something year old aircraft. However, I do wish that these Delta 1 suites did have the sliding door. These are obviously open Delta 1 suites on the 767-400. If you're on the A330-900 Neo or A350-900, you can obviously find um, the Delta 1 suites with the closing door. But these are still really nice and definitely well appreciated. So that's the seat. Uh, really comfortable. The seat looks a lot more comfortable than what it actually is. So the seat looks really nice, really good leather it's made of, however I just feel it could have been a bit more comfortable throughout the flight, and it's definitely really spacious. Mm. The food on this flight, obviously not Michelin star, obviously not um, as good as Air France and Mercer Qatar Airways, but still, this is seriously some really good business class food, better than what you get on pretty much every US airline. Um, really chef-inspired food, very delicious as well. I did like the spinach ravioli I had for dinner. It was really delicious, filled with flavor. I also did like the cauliflower soup and the salad. Everything was fresh, nice and refreshing. However, what was really good um, was the breakfast as well as the ice cream sundae. It was definitely pretty sweet, but still really delicious. I personally love the combination of flavors that Delta opted for. Really delicious, definitely filled with flavor. And also, it was a nice touch that Delta did incorporate their logo on the silver so on today's flight, the food probably earns 3.9 out of a possible 5 stars. Obviously, it could be a bit better. I wish Delta served their courses individually, and I wish they had more than one appetizer available um, with the dinner. Unfortunately, the only appetizer they had was with fish, and maybe if they had a vegetarian appetizer like Qatar Airways or even Emirates, that would definitely be more impressive. However, considering that they do have a pretty good salad and a soup course, that's definitely very impressive, except for the fact that it is served on one tray. So. Let's talk about the amenities. The amenities with Delta One is truly impressive and truly amazing. Um, I really did like the Someone Somewhere amenity kit as well as the Grow and Alchemist amenities found in both the amenity kit and the laboratory. Really spacious laboratory as well, truly um, a great size. And of course we do have the mid-flight snack bar which is definitely well appreciated. Both United and American have something similar on their wide bodies. United has it on their 767s, 7 and 787s. American does have it on their 777s and 787 Dreamliners. So it's definitely really nice to touch to see the mid-flight snack bar. Definitely well stocked on Delta. However, I do prefer the mid-flight snack bar on American, only because it's a bit larger, and I do prefer the layout um, of the snacks and beverages that were offered at American to mid-flight snack bar. However, this is definitely a really nice setup that Delta Airlines had to offer, and um, the quality of the amenities were truly impressive. I did like the Delta Studio branded headphones. The slippers were very comfortable. I actually didn't really uh, get slippers on many business class flights that I've done. Ever since I flew with Delta One, um, this is my second Delta One flight. The last time I got slippers on a business class flight that wasn't with Delta was actually with Qatar Airways back in April of 2023. So it was definitely a really nice touch to see that Delta Airlines was able to provide slippers because it, it was actually something I wasn't expecting um, from Delta Airlines. Even American doesn't provide slippers in business class so it's definitely a really nice touch. The slippers were comfortable to wear throughout the flight, and of course we do have the Weston Henley bedding, which is truly comfortable, so this is definitely some really good amenities provided, so 4.3 out of possible 5 stars. Now let's talk about the IFE system, which earns a solid 4.8 out of possible 5 stars. Truly an impressive selection of Delta, all sorts of movies with many different genres, and you can view new releases, and of course Delta has a really good selection of audio options available from Spotify, since Delta does partner with Spotify. Truly an impressive selection with the IFE. Definitely not as impressive as some other airlines I've seen, but this does have to be one of the best IFE screens I've seen on a 20-something year old aircraft. Very responsive, actually. The IFE remote is conveniently located at the side of the seat, and you can easily browse through the options. I like the fact that you could view other information about other Delta aircraft in the fleet, and including ours today, which is Boeing 767-400. Service on this flight was really impressive. I really liked our purser, Paul. He was really nice, definitely a great flight attendant. The crew on this flight were very friendly and engaging. This is definitely not the best Delta crew I've had. The Delta crew I had on my previous Delta 1 flight were slightly better. However, this is still pretty impressive. Definitely very friendly crew, and all in all, I would fly with Delta again. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.
to Buenos Aires out of Argentina. These are being seen as the captain attacking the aircraft to the gate. He turns off the vents and sees those signs of the majority engine that it is safe. At this time, you can take your portable electronic devices off of airplane mode. When you do that, you'll notice there has been a two hour time change. It's 9 to 33 here in Argentina. We had a two hour time change and a one hemisphere change to the south. It's always a real treat to have a glass jet bridge, which is not really that common in the United States, something that's more common in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and even here in South America. Upon arrival in Buenos Aires, you are obviously required to go through Customs and Immigration, which is located right outside the gate area. Bye guys, thank you so much for watching today's trip report of Delta Airlines and their Delta One Suites business class on the Boeing 767-400.